and how we could serve our country. And it is through the experience of the additional solicitor general, Mr. Parikha Fernando. He will also talk about his experience and how he has come in this field of law up to now. So, uh, uh, before saying over to Mr. Parikha Fernando, this lecture series will also be given to schools uh, and with respect to career guidance. So we warmly welcome Mr. Parker Fernando for the Learn, Earn and Serve Our Nation lecture series. Thank you for coming, sir. Thank you very much indeed for the invitation that was extended to me. I was told that young ladies and gentlemen to be present here and what is expected of me is to give you some sort of guidance. And I'm going to speak to you about the legal profession and how you would be able to join the legal profession and the prospects that are available in joining the legal profession. But before I commence, can I ask you, how many of you are interested in joining the legal profession? How many of you are uh, would like to join the legal profession and become lawyers? At least there is one young gentleman, so I think my speech will benefit him. <laughs> now, to tell you who? At the very commencement, let me tell you that it is thought that lawyers are sometimes selfish. They think that lawyers are cunning. They think that lawyers try to get what they want by twisting words, using their skills, their eloquence, in order to see that their point of view prevails. There are lots of stories about this. They say that there was once, there was a person next to whose house there was a poultry farm. And one day the owner of the poultry farm came to the lawyer's house and asked him that if a dog goes into another house and then picks a hen from that house, whether the owner of the dog is liable to compensate the owner of the hen. The lawyer said, of course. His dog has caused damage, therefore he is responsible for that. Then the owner of the poultry farm had said, very good sir, very good. Your dog came to my poultry farm and picked a hen, so therefore you have to give me, you have to compensate me for the hen. The lawyer said, of course, yes, what is the amount that I have to pay? And that person said, my hen costs 125 rupees. The lawyer said, okay. My legal advice to you will cost you 5,000 rupees, so you can deduct the 125 rupees and pay the rest to me. That's just an indication how lawyers work. But then at the end of my speech, if you still think that you should join the legal profession and you think that lawyers can do some sort of service, I think I have done my duty by the organizers of this seminar. Now the legal profession can be those days, the legal profession was divided into two sections, proctors and advocates. Advocates were the persons who went into court and argued their cases. Proctors were the persons who filed documents in court. So don't think that you cannot be a lawyer if you cannot speak well. Because there are things that you can do outside court also as a member of the legal profession. But certainly if you have oratorical skills, that's going to help you a lot if you join the legal profession. But even if you haven't got those skills, remember, you can do a lot as, an, as a member of the legal profession, even being outside court. Now, if you take the case of the United Kingdom, in the United Kingdom, the division is between barristers and solicitors. Barristers go into court and argue cases. Solicitors file papers in court. Now, in the year 1972, in Sri Lanka, there was a fusion of the two sections and today all members of the legal profession are, are called attorneys at law. So if you want to join the profession, legal profession, you will be joining as an attorney at law. Now how do you become an attorney at law? Now this is something very necessary, very important that you should keep in mind because I can remember when I was in school, there were no career guidance programs. We were not told what we should do. We were not told how we could enter a particular profession. We were not given any sort of guidance. And I think what the organizers are doing today, giving you some sort of guidance at this young level, young age, is extremely important for you. 
and take good note of it and decide for yourself as to what you are going to be and what profession you are going to join. So if you want to be an attorney at law, then the question arises as to how you could become an attorney at law. How many of you know the answer to that question? My young friend, I think you are a royalist, are you? No, you, you, we, are, we are a type very similar to royal type. Right. Can you tell me as to how a person could join the legal profession? If any one of you know that, then it is great, but unfortunately it appears that none of you are aware as to how you join the legal profession. Let me tell you the first thing that you have to do if you want to join the legal profession is that you should get four passes at the A-level examination. If you have four passes at the A-level examination, then you are qualified to sit the law college entrance examination. The law college entrance examination is an examination on general knowledge, aptitude, and it is a three-hour paper conducted by the examinations department. You can see the exam, examination in any language, English, Singer or Tamil. Let me tell you that the law college entrance exam is perhaps the most competitive exam in the whole world. 15,000 sit the exam and 250 are selected for admission to law college. The cutoff point is 80%. Even if you have got 79% at the examination, sometimes you may not be selected to law college. Now that is if you want to join the Sri Lanka law college. But that is not the only way in which you can join the legal profession. The Colombo University has a law faculty. The Colombo University has a law faculty. And also there is an institution called the Open University. You can join the law faculty if you have done the local A-level examination and if you have got good marks, if your Z-score is very high, then you can join the law faculty. The law faculty admits about 150 students to the faculty each year. Recently, I went for a lecture at the law faculty. I do lecture at the law college quite regularly. I also went to the medical college because I do lectures in forensic law to them. I was amazed over one fact. Can anyone just guess what amazed me so much? 75% at least of the students are girls. Fortunately or unfortunately, that appears to be the trend. So if you join the law faculty, then you do the LLB degree examination. You can also join the open university that is less competitive where there is an admission test but you can join the, uh, the open university. There also you follow a LLP degree. LLP degree will take four years at the Colombo University. And the LLP degree at the open university will also take four years. But if you gain admission to the Sri Lanka Law College, then at the end of three years you pass out qualifying to enter the legal profession at the end of three years. There are three exams. Each year there is an examination. You are, you are tested in about six to seven subjects each year. And at the end of three years you qualify to be an attorney at law. Now remember, at the law college, each year you have to, you have to pass the question papers by securing at least 40% in every subject. 40%. And you should have an average of 50%. If you don't have an average of 50%, even if you have secured over 40% in all the subjects, you fail the exam. Then if you have got 60% or over, up to 69%, you get a second class honours pass at law college. If you get above 69, then that's a first class honours pass at the Sri Lanka Law College. Now remember, the Sri Lanka Law College has been established by an institution called the Council of Legal Education. The Council of Legal Education is an independent body and the Sri Lanka Law College is also independent. Though the Sri Lanka Law College is independent, fees are very low. I think for all three years you don't spend more than 30,000 rupees. For all three years. At the end of it you qualify as, I told you that you qualify to admit as an attorney at law. Now, if you join the Open University or if you join the Sri Lanka or the Colombo University Law Faculty, 
once you secure your LLB degree at the end of four years, you still have to join law college and do the law college exams, but you will be exempted from the first year and the second year. You can do only the final year examination. And if you do the final year examination, then you qualify to join as an attorney at law. Now remember, you can also do the London LLB examination, the Royal Institute offers several gateway offers, several institutes, they offer the London LLB exam. You can even go out and do your London LLB. Come some students who can afford to go out to other universities and then they do their London LLB exam and comes to Sri Lanka. Once you do your London LLB and you come to Sri Lanka, you are entitled to enter the Sri Lanka Law College without sitting the competitive examination. So if you have your London LLB, you come to Sri Lanka and you are automatically admitted to the Sri Lanka Law College. But you have to do all three exams since you are considered to be a foreign graduate. If you are a graduate of a local university, you get two exemptions and you can do the final. But if you are a foreign graduate, then you have to do all three exams. Though you have to do all three exams, you need not do those exams in three years. You can do the exams in one year. Because law college exams are held twice a year. So you can, in one and a half years, you can complete your examinations. Now remember, if you join the Sri Lanka Law College, it is not only question papers and law that you study. You are trained in many other fields. Debating skills, oratorical skills, all those things are, your, are things in which you are trained. There is a gold medal called the Hector Jayawardena Gold Medal given to the best orator or for the address to the jury competition. Hector Jawad in a gold medal. Now Hector Jawad in a gold medal is a coveted medal won by several people and the first winner of the Hector Jawad in a gold medal was President J.R. Jawad in a when he was a law student. So if you win the Hector Jawad in a gold medal, your name also will be entered in that list of people who have won it for several years. Then you get mooting competitions. You get client counseling competitions. Now those competitions are held not only locally but also internationally. Sometimes you get the opportunity of going abroad in order to take part in those competitions uh, as a representative of the Sri Lanka Law College or a Sri Lanka's representative. So remember, if you join the Sri Lanka Law College, there are lots of things that you can do there and lots of interesting areas that you can pursue. And that is the way in which you can become a member of the legal profession. Now, after you become a member of the legal profession, once you are a lawyer, then what do you do? Once you become an attorney at law, you are entitled to appear in court and defend, defend your clients. There are lots of other things that you have to do. But remember, you won't be sent into court immediately. Once you pass, then you